Hey everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. In this video, we are going to learn a new and a better way to crawl links to get more recurrence result and more vulnerabilities. So before going to this video, if you haven't checked out my previous video in which I've shown you that how we can find hidden forms that can result in some severe bugs like no SQL injection or SQL injection, then go ahead and check it out. The link is given in the description as well as you can see it on the right side of the screen. Also for those who are new to our channel and haven't checked out our website yet, which is www.bpractical.tech or you can just type bpractical.tech in your browser, then you're missing a lot. Just go and type bpractical.tech and you will be redirected to our awesome website where we are providing lots of useful information related to cybersecurity as well as web development. And we are also offering labs related to account takeovers wherein you are going to learn that how hackers have actually exploited the real world scenarios to execute account takeover vulnerabilities, right? Isn't that awesome? Go ahead and join it out and increase your cybersecurity skills. And now with that being said, let's get started. So uh, first of all, let's get to the basic of it, right? So whenever you are uh, hunting uh, for a vulnerability on a particular bug bounty program, I'm going to uh, take uh, an example of bug bounties for to be more specific, but this technique is going to work even if you are doing a pen test, right? So suppose we have taken an example that uh, we have, uh, we want to hunt into a bug bounty program, right? So the very first thing that we are going to do is we are going to get all the possible subdomains, right? First thing first, we're gonna get the root domains, right? All the domains owned by that particular company. Then we're going to get the subdomains, right? After getting the subdomains, what is our goal? Our goal is to find the subdomain that have the more chances of the vulnerability, right? For example, let's say there is a subdomain that is, uh, you know, using an old version of PHP, right? From this, we may, uh, we can conclude that, okay, this may be vulnerable to some sort of vulnerabilities, right? We have choose that particular subdomains. Now, what we want to do, what should we do next, right? The important thing is to discover contents, to do content discovery, content enumeration, right? Now, there are a lot of ways to do it, right? We can have so many awesome tools that are currently in the market, like Katana and get all URLs, Fayback URLs. Right. We can also use some brute forcing tools like uh, GoBuster, DIR Search, right? Uh, Ferox Buster. By the way, if you don't know how to use Ferox Buster, then I also have created a video on it uh, in our channel. You can just go ahead and check it out. Right. Now the thing is that these tools are pretty awesome and pretty powerful. But the thing is that the data that they are giving is not very uh, structured, right? So the data is very unorganized, right? Suppose for example. You want to look for SQL injection vulnerabilities, right? Then what, what are you looking for? You're looking for parameters, the parameters that have some uh, get parameters, some post parameters, right? Some, maybe sometimes you want to look for some sensitive files, right? Maybe there are some files over here in the particular application, right? Sometimes you want to look for the external links. Maybe you're looking for broken link hijacking vulnerabilities, right? You are looking for external links, right? So these uh, particular tools are not giving the data in the organized manner. So here, is how we can get the organized data from crawling the links, right? So we have a very awesome tool known as Photon. It is actually quite fast and it is quite useful tool when it comes to crawling links, right? And I recommend everyone who is into cybersecurity or who is doing web pen testing that you should always go for Photon and let me tell you why. So the first thing, go to your browser and type Photon like I'm showing you over here. So let me just open a new tab. Let's type photon right over here and it is as you can see. So this is the tool and this link is given in the description. Don't worry about it. So as you can see, it can do a bunch lot of cool stuff, right? So it can look for vulnerabilities in uh, sorry, it can look for uh, links in the JavaScript files. It can it have so many level of depth. So the more depth you choose, the more deeply it's going to crawl links. It can give you some intel like uh, it can find email address, social media accounts, S3 buckets, etc. Right from the source code of it, see how crazy it is. And it can also check for files. It can check for secret keys as well. It can have so many JavaScript files and it will just check for secret keys on them. It can also check for JavaScript files. It can check for uh, custom regex, regular expression that you are providing. It can also look for subdomains and DNS related data inside the source code. It can also look for external links as well. And I'm going to show you that how we can use this tool. See, as you can see, so this is the data that it got from one of the example over here. Right. So this tool is actually quite powerful. And this is the reason why that we're going to use this particular tool. So how we can use this tool is actually quite simple. Just copy this link, right? Go to your Kali Linux or go to your terminal and type git clone and just clone this link out. 
right so it take some time depending on your internet connection in my case you can see that right over here we have photon already installed and it's not an empty directory so it's why it's giving this error right once we have this tool in, uh, clone we want to just go to this directory right over here and here as you can see so i have already scanned for these two domains that's why it's already there in your case it will be only these files so the first thing that you should be doing is you should be uh, installing the requirements so you can type pip3 install minus r requirements.txt it's going to install all the requirements necessary to run this particular tool just wait for seconds and as you can see the requirement is already satisfied maybe in your case it's going to take some time depending on your internet connection and in your uh, system configuration once we have this configured we are good to go and we are ready to use this tool let's see how we can use it. just type python3 photon.py like this hit enter and then we'll have all the functionalities uh, uh, for this tool right over here as you can see we can specify the url we can specify the cookies custom regular expression we can export the output in the csv format or maybe json format we can also set the output directory the levels threads to increase the speed we can also add delays if the application is getting blocked if your request is getting blocked by the web application firewall you can also choose for delay right we can also see more result by using this verbose option we can have seeds so we can also have our custom user agents we can have proxies as well and we can the interesting thing is that we can have dns we can have keys to look for secret keys we can do a bunch lot of cool stuff using this particular tool we can also check for uh, the passive sources to uh, of links right using wayback url so as you can see over here we have archive.org so this is the total functionalities of this tool and the important ones are minus u for the root then we're gonna go with minus l to set the levels and that's pretty much it and we're also going to use minus keys and minus dns so let's see how we can use this tool for example so suppose that I want to use this particular tool on a website. Let's say the panicalus.com. As you can see over here, we have this website. Now it has blocked my IP address or what? Let me just check it once again. Okay, so my IP address has been blocked. So let's test on testphp.vulnerweb.com for now. Let me just refresh it. And as you can see, there's a link. Just copy this. And now type python3 photon.py minus u paste the URL specify the level i'm gonna go with level three so default levels then we can choose keys to get the keys if the keys are there and we can also go with minus minus dns to grab the subdomains from the links or the source code as well but i'm not going to do it dns now just leave it as it is so we are looking for keys and we are crawling the links right let's see how it is going to generate the output let's wait a few seconds and let's see once this program gets executed as you can see we have the data we have the links already categorized into four uh, different categories right we have files we have internal links we have external links and we have fuzzable links let's see and as you can see we have the output saved as testphp.malmweb.com in this directory let's visit this directory right over here we have these links already categorized right see how awesome it is now if I want to look for a uh, broken links type of vulnerability, I can just go with externals.txt, right? Maybe you can find some uh, Google Drive link that have some sensitive information, right? I, already, I have seen one case where the hacker was able to find a drive link in the source code from which it was able to get the sensitive PII information, right? As you can see, we have these many uh, external links right over here. Then we have files.txt. Let's look into that. And over here, you'll see that we have all these files uh, that are getting loaded by the application right maybe we can test for local file inclusion or other vulnerabilities right over here then we have fuzzable let's see the fuzzable data and as you can see over here we have all those links on which we can fuzz on and we can test for different type of vulnerabilities like uh, uh, ssti maybe sql injection cross scripting and all right and the final thing is that we have the internal links as you can see all these links are in internal and maybe these links can have some endpoints that is somewhat interesting like maybe you'll be able to find a sign up page on a particular web application that doesn't allow you to sign up because the link is there in the javascript file right so this is how you can use this particular tool it's an awesome tool and i must recommend you guys that 
please use this tool if you are into cyber security as well as bug bounty so i hope that you have understood it how we can use photon if you have any doubts if you have any issues then feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section and do join our telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going into cyber security as well as web development and now with that being said keep learning and thanks for watching